Welcome, geeks, to another episode of New Code Rules. You know, I've been contracting on and off for about 20 years, and pretty much that whole 20 years I've been considered an expert in .NET. And when I was hired, even in the beginning, 20 years ago, I noticed that, you know, the teams or companies really didn't take full advantage of my expertise. Some companies did take advantage of my expertise, even at one company about 10 years ago, 20% of my job was actually helping other teams and mentoring people in my team. Sometimes at that company, there would be a, two or three people waiting at my cube to ask me questions or you know, some kind of architectural guidance or something like that. I really love helping people in that way. Quite a while ago, I worked for a company that provides temporary nurses to hospitals. And again, I was hired as the expert and I, my cube was actually an earshot of the conference room where most of the meetings were. And there were multiple times during that contract where they were talking about something in the meeting and I knew the answer and I'm sitting in my head going, I know the answer. Why am I not invited to this meeting? I have some ideas about that I'll share in a couple minutes. For a more recent example, my last contract job, which I was on for a little over two years, the original manager hired me specifically to basically kick the team in their butt and get them into the newer way of, uh, you know, coding and things like that. And, um, and to mentor the, the other developers who were mostly junior developers and mentor them and teach them the proper way of coding in, in .NET and proper way of architecting and, and also moving them to the cloud. One person on the team, I, I mentored pretty much the whole time I was there. And even last year, I helped her get into a computer science a degree, a master's degree program. But at almost every turn, I was being blocked by other people um, from other teams. For example, uh, one of the things we wanted to do with the, the project that I architected and coded there, which was uh, the company said was the most successful project in, in the company's history. You know, one of the things we wanted to do with that uh, project was to move some of the processing into AWS. Almost the entire time I was there, we were begging for access to the AWS console. I mean, full access so we can, you know, try things out and, you know, try microservices or whatever we wanted to do. We wanted to try them out. And for over two years, we begged and begged and begged, you know, did so much work on justifying why we need uh, read and write access to the AWS console. And when I left at the company, we still didn't have access to the AWS console. I couldn't even... I couldn't even execute the microservices uh, that I wrote and taught the other people in the team how, how to write. And we couldn't even execute them to test them. So even though I architected multiple projects to use AWS services, not one of them was working when I left the company. And that's two years of begging access. Uh, but unfortunately, the DevOps team there uh, <laughs> thought that, you know, providing virtual machines in the cloud was cloud computing. <laughs> that's, that's just not cloud computing by any stretch. Yeah, I know I'm laughing, but that's the team we were dealing with. So at that company, there was multiple layers of blockage and uh, to get things done, or at least get what my original goal was to do at that company. So I've been thinking about this a lot. And one of the reasons I came up with was, you know, maybe some of the other developers don't want me to say things because it'll, it'll make them not look as smart as they, they, they project themselves at. I, I will probably say that's probably the, the most plausible reason, uh, to me at least. But I came up with a couple others. Another one was... You know, I'm just dealing with developers who just don't want to grow and learn. The last reason I came up with is maybe this is a disruption to other teams. And in the case of where I, my last contract is, I felt that the teams there, you know, were spent so much time protecting their silos, as I call them, that they, they didn't want anybody. They didn't want to help anybody because that meant they had to do work. All right. So not only are they protecting their silos, but they just don't want to do any work. So I have three call to actions. And one is, if you're going to hire an expert and not listen to them, this is a failure in management. And, and about half the companies that hire me as an expert, this is what I feel, is that the management just isn't taking it, you know, isn't listening to us. And I've never understood that. If you're going to hire experts and not listen to them, stop wasting my time 
and stop wasting your money. Consultants cost a lot of money. And kind of on the flip side, if your team is in trouble or needs some guidance and things like that, which I've done at companies, then reach out and hire an expert. I'm, you don't have to hire an expert for six months or three months. And sometimes it could be just a week uh, just to get you over whatever is going on uh, with the project at that time. But if you need help, reach out, hire an expert. You know, this is what we're here for. That's it for new code rules this week. Uh, let me know your thoughts. You know, have, have you been a consultant and, and felt this way? Or are you in a company that needs help and your company won't hire an expert uh, to come in on a consulting basis and, and help your team out? Either way, uh, let me know what you think and uh, email me at uh, rockinthecodeworld at csharpcorner.com. And with that, I'll see you next time on New Code Rolls.